Army Police Precinct, Sergeant Waters. The shooting where? Yeah. Yeah. Who oh, shot? Who? Well, you are in the muster room at the 21st Precinct, yeah. the nerve center. A call is coming through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. All right. Stay right there. I'll send the officers right over. And an ambulance, too. Yeah. Right away. Don't worry. 21st Precinct, transcribed. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of a square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants, of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was off duty and not due on the job until 8 a.m. Among the 53 men on the job in the precinct was patrolman Raymond Dowd, age 43, 17 years in the job and nine in the 21st precinct assigned to post number six which consisted of five blocks along 2nd Avenue in the 70s. When he reached his post a few minutes after midnight, he relieved patrolman Louis Barron, who had been on the job since 4 p.m. Then, as regulations require, he began trying the doors to shops, checking street lights and traffic signals. Halfway down the avenue, he noticed a figure standing in the doorway to a butcher shop across the street. He went over. As he approached the opposite curb, he saw the figure was that of a man, a young man. A young man dressed too lightly and shivering with cold. A young man with a suitcase. What's the trouble? There's no trouble. What are you standing out here in the cold for? Uh, I'm waiting for my brother. He's supposed to drive by and pick me up here. Where do you live? Downtown. Avenue A. What are you doing up here? Oh, I was just visiting somebody. A friend of mine. What's in that suitcase? Huh? Oh, a tuxedo. Yeah? I borrowed it from my friend for New Year's Eve. Yeah? What's your name? Elliot. Elliot what? Elliot's my last name. Jack Elliot. Have you got any identification, Jack? Oh, what do you mean? Like a driver's license? That'll do, yeah. Oh, sure. I, I got a driver's license. Uh, let's see it a minute, huh? Well, I'm... I'm just waiting for my brother. Let's see the license. Okay. I think I got it in my wallet. That's where I... Okay, get back there. Now, look, boy. Get back there. I'll kill you, I swear. Give me that gun. Get back. Give it here. Get away from me. I told you. I told you I would. Hold up. Hold up. Boy, hold up. The shots were heard by patrolman Ernest Pagano, who was patrolling an adjacent post. Within minutes, two sector cars, the sergeant's car, a detective squad car from the 21st Squad, and an emergency service car arrived in response to the radio call. Under supervision of the detectives, a search of the neighborhood was begun for the assailant. In the meantime, an ambulance arrived and patrolman Dowd was taken to Bellevue Hospital. The suitcase left at the scene by the assailant was taken to the station house. As soon as he had a report of the occurrence, Lieutenant Snyder, the desk officer on the job, notified me at my home, and I arrived at the station house at 1.15 a.m. I conferred with Lieutenant King, commander of the 21st Detective Squad, who told me that Patrolman Dowd's condition was serious but not dangerous, that the officer had fired three shots at the fleeing assailant and believed that one had hit him. While I went to Bellevue to visit Patrolman Dowd, Officers were called to Lenox Hill Hospital Emergency Ward where an unconscious man suffering from loss of blood due to a gunshot wound in the thigh had been brought in by a taxicab driver. Detectives reported that although the man was in no condition to be questioned, it appeared from his clothing and general physical description that he was the fugitive. At 2.55, I returned to the station house and lay down on the couch in my office with instructions that I be awakened if there were any developments in the case, but in no event later than 7 a.m. Captain. Uh, Captain. Yeah. 
It's 7 o'clock, Captain. Oh, thank you, Sergeant. Yeah. Mm. Something nice. Yeah. We've got some hot coffee going. That's good. As soon as I wash my face. Yes, sir. Lieutenant Snyder spoke to the doctor down at Bellevue. Uh -huh. That's going to be okay. Definitely. Good. And that boy in Lennox Hill. Yeah. He's regained consciousness. Uh, does he admit shooting down? I don't know if the detectives have been able to talk to him, Captain. But his wife's here. Oh? Yes, sir. There was an address in his pocket. Detectives went up there, they found her and brought her back. It's uh, her husband in the hospital? Yes, sir. They took her over to Lennox Hill. She identified him. He was under anesthetic. Uh-huh. Oh, uh, Lieutenant King asked if he can come upstairs when you wake up. He wants authorization to visit him this morning. All right. Is uh, Lieutenant King up there now? Yes, sir. Oh, I'll go right up. Oh, uh, there's the tally. He's carrying the squeal. The tally? Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, Captain. You going upstairs? Yes, sir. Well, i got to get back on the board. Okay, Sergeant. How does it look, Lee? Well, for one thing, whoever it was shot down with the burglar. Yeah? Yeah, the suitcase full of goods at the scene came out of an apartment on 79th Street. The victim identified it and reported its flat was broken in sometime between 10 last night and when he got home at 3.30 this morning. What about the boy in the hospital? Well, he denies shooting down. But we'll, uh, we'll know about that for sure in a little while. The ballistic squad has got the slug that came out of his thigh. They're comparing it with a test slug from Dowd's gun. If it matches, that's the boy. Do you have any doubt about it, Lee? No, sir. He didn't have the gun on him, the one that shot down? Well, we figured he threw it someplace before he hailed a cab. We got men out looking. Oh, oh that's, uh, that's the wife. She's young. Yes, sir, and pretty Yes, sure. I'll let you know that. Yeah. yeah. It's sort of rough, but uh, what can you do? Mrs. Wagon, this is uh, Captain Kennelly. Oh, how do you do? Mrs. Wagon. Are you the one I'm supposed to talk to about getting into King Jack? Yes, that's right. Oh, well, can I? Oh, it's up to me to issue the authorization, but this is a felony case, and I have to talk it over with the lieutenant of detectives. Oh. What does that mean, felony case? That your husband is suspected of a serious crime. Two serious crimes, as a matter of fact. Burglarizing an apartment and shooting a police officer. I don't think Jack would do anything like that. Are you sure about it? I mean, he never said anything to me. Oh, well, it seems uh, that would be the last thing he would do, say something to you. I guess so. Would you tell me something? If I can, sure. I don't know anything about the police or what's supposed to be done. What happens to him now? Well, he's in a private hospital under a police guard. He'll be taken to Bellevue Hospital Prison Ward as soon as he can be moved. Doesn't he get a trial or something? Yes, he'll be booked on the charges and he'll have a hearing in felony court. They're not going to take him to court when he's so sick. No, it'll wait. Let's go in, Big. Thank you very much. That's all right. I I'm sorry if I was any trouble. No, you aren't. I'll just, uh, just sit right there. All right. Yes? Captain Kennelly. Come in, Captain. Good morning, Matt. Captain. Come in, Big. Yes, sir. Sit down, Captain. Yep. Well, is that the right boy in the hospital, Matt? Yes, sir, that's him. I just got a call a few minutes ago. The slug in his leg came out of Dowd's gun. This one's name is Jack Wigan, mm hmm? That's right. W-Y-G-A-N. Where'd he get the name Elliot he gave to Dowd? He must have pulled it out of thin air, Captain. Have you talked to him? No, sir, I'm going over there right away. understand he's all right. Isn't that what you said, Lee? Yes, sir, I spoke to him for a little while. The doctor says you can talk to him as long as you want after 7.30. That's after the nurses get through straightening things up. And uh, the stuff in that suitcase came out of a burglary. That's right, Captain. He broke into a flat over there on 79th Street and cleaned the place out. That's probably why he was on such an edge when Dowd walked up to him. He'd just gotten away from there. Does he have any record? We haven't printed him yet, Captain, but Beach checked out the name through BCI. What do they have on him, V? Well, a man of the same name, John P. Wagon, also known as Jack Wagon, same address. Five arrests. One is a juvenile for car theft. Mm -hmm. Four others, uh, 1897 and grand larceny. Two convictions, probation the first time. Second time he pulled two and a half to five in Elmira, plus 11 months he owed on the probation. Yeah. Well, he was up there 19 months altogether. Released last August. I see. 
What does his wife say about all this? She says she didn't know he was ever in a jam. Yes, sir. She was pretty surprised and upset when we hit the door up there. What do you say about her seeing him, Matt? Well, I don't see why not, Captain. I want to talk to him first, then she can see him. Okay. Let's have her in here, Pete. Yes, sir. I'm glad Dow's going to be okay, Captain. Yeah, he's lucky. Very lucky. Well, I don't know whether I call it lucky, Captain, to get his plug in you. You want me in there? That's right, in here, please. Want to sit down over here, Mrs. Wagon? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. How long have you been married to Jack? About three months. We're married in September? Yes. September. September 23rd. Uh, how old are you? Nineteen. Did Jack ever tell you he'd been in trouble before? No. He never told you he was away for a while, that he's on parole now? No. Does he have a job? Well, off and on. He did work on the docks, you know. More off than on, though, huh? Yes, I guess so. Where do you think he got the money to support you? I don't know. I never asked. He just brought it home. Didn't you care? I cared. I just never asked. Can I go over and see him? That's what I'd like to do if I can. You can see him, yes. If that's what you want. You are listening to 21st Precinct. A factual account of the way police work in the world's largest city. Back to 21st Precinct and Captain Kennelly. As I was required to interview the suspect in connection with my report on the injury to Patrolman Dowd, I rode to the hospital with Lieutenant King, Detective Vitale, and Anna Wagon in the detective squad car. The girl said nothing on the way, nor after we got out of the car and walked into the hospital. When the elevator stopped at the floor and we got out, she still had said nothing. It's down that way. Uh-huh. You better wait right here, Mrs. Wagon. I want to see him. You'll get to see him. Please. You sit down here and wait till we get through talking to him. All right. Right here. It'll be okay. You won't forget? No, we'll call you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, she must be kind of rough on her. Yeah, Captain, it must be. What kind of place do they live in, Veep? Yeah, nothing fancy, Captain. Furnished room. Who's on the job of the guard here, Veep? Meister there was, Lieutenant, but that was the 12 to 8 to I don't think he's had a chance to be relieved yet. Oh, yeah. in there. Hello, Meister. Captain. How's the patient? He seems okay, Lieutenant. He ate. Well, that's a good sign. How are you doing, Jack? Great. Yeah, I can imagine. This is Captain Kennelly and Lieutenant King. What do you say? Jack? How are you feeling now? Like a million dollars. You want to tell us how you got that bullet in the leg? Some guy was drunk and playing with a gun. It went off. I didn't come over here to listen to that kind of stuff, Jack. Well, what do you want from me? That's what happened. You're going to stick with it, huh? It's the truth. Excuse me, Captain, while you're here, can I be excused on a personal... Yes, yeah, sure. Go ahead, Master. Yes, sir. And uh, while you're out there, ring in and find out where your relief is. Okay, I will, Captain. Yeah, what a deal he's got, huh? You think so? Sitting in a nice soft chair, drawing a salary to see I don't run away. A big hole in my leg, and you need him to see that I don't run away. That's the job of the year. Who does he know? He knew a guy like you, Jack. A thief. A thief stuck him in the chest with a knife. He was in the hospital six weeks. He's not over it yet. That's why he gets the soft job with the soft chair. Well, I sure walked into that one, didn't I? You sure did. Now, let's stop wasting time, Jack. I got plenty to waste. You're going to have a lot more. We'll see about that. Just because some guy got drunk and was playing with a gun. Now, come off it. We got the slug out of your leg. We're getting it matched up with the cop's gun. If that's not good enough for you, that cop will pick you out of a lineup with one eye closed. Now, you might have all the time in the world to waste, but I don't. How'd you get that bullet in the leg? All right. You win. I won before I started, Jack. I shot the cop, but I warned him. I told him to stay away from me. He can't say I didn't give him a warning. What's that supposed to get you... I don't know. Why'd you shoot him? It was just one of those things. Listen, will you hand me one of them tissues there? These? Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I don't know why. It was just one of those things. You shot him because you had a bag full of stuff you took out of that apartment on 79th Street there, didn't you? Oh. He got that worked out, too, huh? We've got everything worked out, Jack. Okay. 
I don't guess there's any use holding back anything. I made this apartment, see? I piled the stuff up and got a suitcase out of the guy's closet and put it all in there. Then I walked out and went over to 2nd Avenue. I wanted to get a cab and get out of there fast. So, just my luck, where are the cabs? Not a cab in sight, no place. Yeah. So it's cold and I step back into the doorway there to keep a little bit warm while I'm waiting for a cab to come. And all of a sudden, a cop comes across the street. I didn't do nothing to attract his attention. First thing I know, he wants to talk to me. He asked me what I got in the bag, what my name is, and where I live. You told him your name is Elliot. Where'd you get that? Oh, I don't know. It was the first thing come into my mind. I, I got a friend, Elliot. Then he wants to see some identification. Well, I got no identification with Elliot on it, so I figured here I am. Unless I do something, I'm hooked. I got a bag full of goods. I got this gun in my pocket. I figure I'm dead for burglary. I'm, I'm dead for having a gun on my hip. I owe him a lot of short time. I mean, I can see him throwing away the key. So I, I decided to do something. To kill him? No, no, I swear. I swear not to kill him. All I wanted to do was get away from there clean, that's all. I mean, you can ask him. Ask the cop, didn't I tell him to stay back from me, but he, he come at me. And you shot him? Oh, he asked for it. If anybody ever asked for it, he did. I could have killed him if I wanted to, but I didn't want to. I just wanted to get out of there. So he sort of bunched up and I lit out. I ran down the block. Well, the first thing you know, he was shooting after me, and one of them shots caught me. But I kept on going. I knew it'd be crawling with law around there in a minute. So I cut over toward Third Avenue. Oh, boy, it was killing me. That leg was just killing me, bleeding. Just bleeding like crazy. What'd you do with the gun? I don't know. I threw it someplace. Down some cellar steps over there, I think. I threw it, and I kept on going. I... I didn't even want to see it anymore. And I tried some doors, and I went in the hallway and just sat there for about a half an hour, an hour, I don't know, until I thought it was okay. When I thought it was okay, I got up, and I could hardly stand. That's how bad it was. But I got out on the street and went on over to 3rd Avenue, and there was a cab there, and I got in it. He just went a couple of blocks, maybe three. Started to get dizzy, and that's that. And the next thing I know, here I am. Lennox Hill. The cab driver brought you in. Uh, a big favor. Yeah, he's looking for you. It was 65 cents on the clock, plus a mess in the back of his car. That chance he's got. So what happens to me now? He'll probably move you down to Bellevue this afternoon. Oh, this is so delightful. I'll enjoy it while you can. Captain, Lieutenant Gorman wants you to ring in when you get a chance. Okay, Marcia. Nothing urgent, he said. Somebody down in the motor maintenance bureau wants to talk to you before noon. All right. Where's your relief, Marcia? On the way, Captain. You've been hitting a lot of flats in this precinct, haven't you, Jack? No. I ain't been working around here at all, I swear to you. Where have you been working the flats? I ain't been working any place. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do with you, Jack. I've got a fistful of squeals on burglaries the last three or four weeks. I'm going to bring them over here this afternoon before you get moved to Bellevue. We're going to go over them one by one. You're going to tell me what flats you were in and what flats you weren't. I wasn't in any. And we'll have to take another look around your room. You must have a load of pawn tickets someplace. Another look. Were you there already? I was there, yeah. I just find out where I lived. It was in your pocket. Oh, yeah. Uh, did you see Anna? Yeah, I saw her. Did you tell her what happened? Yeah. Uh, well, I guess she had to find out sometime, huh? She's all right, that kid. You know that? She's okay. Yeah, she looks all right. Too good for you. That's the truth. That's the sad truth. Does she know I'm here? I mean, that I was hurt? Yeah, she knows. What'd she say? Nothing much. But well, she must have said something. Well, I told her, but uh, she didn't believe it. That's Anna. <laughs> That's Anna for you. But she believes it now. She's outside there waiting. Oh? Is she? Yeah. Well, can I see her? Why not? Marcia. It's all right, Captain. Pete and I are going. We'll send her in. Okay. You want to ride back to the house? No, I'll ring in and have a car come by. I'll have to go on patrol. Okay. We'll see you this afternoon, Jack. Yeah. See you later, Marcia. Yeah, yeah. Take it easy. Oh, boy. Hey, listen. 
Could you give me another piece of that tissue there? I, I don't know where I got this coal. Must be from breaking into drafty flats. Oh, that's funny. Out of the room, I went and got the gun and put it in my bag. To give to Jack? No. That's 
not so. Then why did you want to see him alone? To tell him I... I think I'm going to have a baby. Oh. The detective told me how to police him and that he was in terrible trouble. That he was going away. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I was going to take care of the baby all alone. What people would say. I sat with words. I made up my mind. You were going to use it on yourself? Well, I'm saying to say it. That's the reason I brought it. Not to give it to Jack. He had so much to worry about. I just wanted to get some of his worries out of the way. Do you want to go tell him now? Before we go? No. I don't think I'll tell him at all. I don't think it would make any difference to him. Go to the police station. Wherever else we have to go. I wish there was some other place to go. Believe me. And so it goes. Around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh and blood merry-go-round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or... The brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, transcribed a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the Police Department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King, Harold Stone as Sergeant Waters. Featured in tonight's cast, Lawson Zerbe, Frank Campanella, Elaine Roth, and Frank Moss. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking. <laughs>